All right, we've arrived in Woodland, Washington, home of G. Loomis. We're here at the factory. Uh, it's freezing outside. Let's go ahead and get inside, see how all these rods are handcrafted. Let's check it out, man. I'm really excited about it. Hey, Jared. Hey, Good Bruce. To see Good to see you, man. You too. Welcome to G. Loomis. It's a lot colder up here than where I just came from. Yeah, it's probably colder than people expect, but it's been an unusual winter, so. Awesome. But come on back. I've got some great stuff to show you. Looking forward to it. Yeah, you bet. Okay, Jaren, well, I'm glad you could make it. Here's some safety glasses. We're going to need that. Sir. Well, why don't you give us a little brief you know, background on G. Loomis, how long it's been around, where, where you guys originated from. You know, has this always been here? Or is no, this new? factory actually is relatively new, 1990. Um, new 20 years, but the company's been in business since 1982 when we made just blanks. And then in 1985, we went into production rods. Okay. Um, the factory used to be up on the Lewis River in an old furniture manufacturing plant really? or something. Yeah, it was an old tin building. It was it was different. Back then we didn't have uh, control atmosphere or anything. We couldn't, if it got too hot, we had to shut down because the graphite would cure laying on the tables wow. in their patterns. And it was some crazy times, but the people that work here, um, a lot of them have been here since we started. We've got probably six or eight of the original employees that still work here. And the average length of employment is about 14 and a half years. So, Jeez, that's unheard of these days. It is, it, it really is. Happen. It shows a lot of loyalty yeah. these people. Well, you'll see the smile on their faces. Let's go out there and have right. a look. What do you All think? right, cool. Looking forward to it. Okay. You ever been in a blank plant before or a rod factory before? Never been in one. Well, we, what we do is try and get the flow to go from one end to the other so it's efficient. But we have three lines. They're all separate. One is for really high labor items, and then one is for one piece and like bass rods and stuff. And then we have one for multi-piece, like for fly. Okay. Right here, um, we're working on some bass rods. The girl cut the patterns for, I think some of our new IMX rods. So let me, uh, let me show you what we do here. Well, first of all, I probably should show you this. This is the graphite. Um, different materials on this big wheel, and they have a what they call a traveler that goes with the, the blank when it goes through production. So what that tells the girls is the pattern, how to cut it, everything about it, uh, what material to use, what the trim length is, all that, all that important stuff. So we make sure that this blank, as it goes through the factory, stays as this blank and doesn't get mixed up with anything else. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so what we've got going on here is they'll lay, cut these patterns designed on that traveler, and then they'll lay the material out on his flat glass surface, okay. and they'll put these big heavy weights on there to hold the straight edge in place, and that whole thing is cut by hand with a razor blade. See, I would have never thought that. I mean, like I said, I've never been in a factory, but my, I envision just all these massive machines pumping these rods out, and you, you got a person starting the handcrafting process, which is, I mean, I, I would have never guessed that. So it's really, really, really neat. Well, there's a lot of people that have what they call production facilities okay. that people jokingly call G. Loomis a, a custom ro a rod factory rather than a custom, you know, a rod yeah. manufacturer. We're like, we build like custom rods. So everything we do right. is by, basically by hand. Uh, there's 12 steps to the blank process and 11 of them are hands-on. Wow. And much of that is hand work just like this. So it's pretty intense. Yeah. And uh, there's a reason why our rods are expensive because we put a lot of labor and a lot of love into them. One thing I don't want to overlook, Jared, is we have all these different levels of performance in graphites. Okay. And all the materials kind of look the same. In fact, let me get you a hunk of, uh, get, dig it out of the garbage here. <laughs> Here's a piece of graphite as it comes off the roll. Okay. Basically, you can see the fibers running longitudinally this way. That's the way they would lay up on the blank. Right. And then you notice those little cross pieces in there? Yes. Looks like it's kind of woven. That's the scrim, because when you bend the blank, the top fibers have to travel further than the bottom. Right, so the right. top fibers are in extension, if you will, the bottom fibers are in compression. And that, if you will, that round blank wants to oval. If it collapses, it'll break, okay. it causes failure. So one of the most important things people don't even realize is what we call scrim fiber. And that's in here, you can see it in that woven part. Yeah, it's a pattern going down. Right, and it's very light and it really helps build up the blank. Now, we call this pre -pray. And this paper backing protects it because when you feel that now, you can feel the sticky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's been impregnated with the resin system, which becomes, in effect, the glue of the blank, which okay. holds everything together. 
In the old days, remember I told you the, f the plant had to shut down sometimes if it got too hot, right? Well, that stuff. Did it get too tacky? No, not too tacky, it'd cure. Really? It'd break over and this would be hard as a rock. If it so got that's over a certain good temperature, no. <laughs> so, a lot of fun stuff. All right, Bruce. Well, the way to the next station, we, this whole wall is full of these deals. What are, what are they and what are they used for? And well, we call, they're templates. And what they are is some of the more common patterns that we cut with a graphite. And these are and all just, hand cut? Yeah, and they just make it easier to follow the pattern. So gotcha. you don't have to go and, you know, with a ruler and go through all the stuff. But, so uh, these are for every rod? We have templates for most of the most common patterns for every different weapon gotcha. we make. Yeah. Okay, okay. There's lots of them. Cool. And these are the mandrels. I talk about a mandrel all the time when I'm explaining how we build that blank to you. Okay. But a mandrel basically is stainless steel. It's contoured to a specific taper design. And what it does is it gives us a solid base to wrap the material on. So, so the graphite a, we've seen over there. The graphite that we showed you over there where they're cutting those patterns. Okay. What they'll do next is they'll lay it up on this mandrel. They've, they've got a, a measuring spot on their table. And we call it the tack table. So what they're going to do is they're going to tack this mandrel with the material. Okay. And since that resin's on there and it's activated by heat, that heat, they'll put it on with an iron. And it'll hold it in place so they can roll the material around this mandrel. Okay. And basically, once that's rolled around the mandrel, then they'll keep it in that position with some tape. And um, that tape will shrink tape. And we put it on two different directions so that it unilaterally shrinks around that graphite. And basically f forces the graphite to take the shape of this mandrel. Now you saw how we had different patterns cut with that material. Mm -hmm. That also enhances the wall thickness to make it thick where it needs to be stiff and thin where it needs to flat. Okay, the next spot we're going to go is we're going to go back around here and see how they load the ovens and how they cook this stuff. So are these the ovens right here? Yeah, they're all new last December. A wow. uh, big investment for us, but uh, you got to have it, it, right? Improves in consistency in the product and more reliable and less breakdowns. Right. The old ovens we made custom ourselves and every one of them was a little different. These things are all exactly the same. So uh, it makes a better process for us. So here what we got is the ovens that we just talked about and then we've got uh, those bars you see, he's got that little tool. He, he uh, puts the manual in there to hold it in place. Now that we've gone through everything up to the ovens, we, we need to pull manuals. You can see this machine right here. It's a hydraulic machine. Okay. It's got key in it. One is the size of the manual with slot in it, so right. that it can basically squeegee that blank right off that manual. And once they do that, then they take them over here to the, to the, to the uh, stripping table where they strip all that tape off. But it's kind of cool how that tape was because if, if you'll remember, they had like scotch tape, right? And it was soft and pliable. It feels like scotch tape without glue. Yep. That's after it's gone through the shrink shrinking process, it uh, becomes pretty rigid. And these rings are the overlaps that are created from the, from the resin rising okay. to the surface. And, the, and that resin comes through, tries to leak through these little uh, right. overlaps in the tape. And it makes that really pretty spiral ridge you see in the blanks. Right. Okay, this is that blank we were watching him strip. Okay. And you can feel the edges from that tape. Yeah. So it's not just a visual thing, it's a it's a physical edge that comes up and that's why he has not to worry so much about taking that blade and right. tripping that tape okay. off of it. And because we're gonna sand all this off anyway. So okay. all those beautiful rings that you see in many of our blanks that has that right. nice circle ring through the blank. It looks translucent is the result of the high and low spots okay. where they sand off that resin. Right. So, and in the end, let me set this down. This is what the blank will look like, all sanded. Yeah, and you nice can still see that pattern. You can still see the rings, yeah. but there's no rough edge and there's no extra weight. Right. We're just sanding off all the unwanted weight. So, what's the difference in the weight, you know, from this rod, one that hasn't been sanded? To the one that's been sanded, is it? It's probably gonna, it's probably gonna be five or six or maybe eight percent lighter. Wow! Because we're taking off a lot of unwanted weight, and the resin is just gonna go away. It's more than strong enough to handle it. This is an IMX drop shot rod, one of those new rods we're coming out with. First next. time I've ever felt one. Yeah, and I'm sure you're gonna be fishing with it before long. I hope so.
So Jared, this is where we sand the blanks. And basically, it's kind of like this machine right here we're looking at. It's got um, a belt. Okay. It's a water-based sander, so it rolls it rolls that belt around the, around the pulleys, and the water keeps it from burning it up, right. basically. Keeps it from, and it also keeps the dust down. But the machines they work with every day, unlike this one, are computer enhanced so that they can take exactly down to the ten thousandths or whatever that they want to take off of that blank to so get the right. So sanding it doesn't affect the integrity of the rod? No, not at all. It's We've got so much unnecessary weight. resin on the outside that's been squeegeed to the surface, right. basically. Right, right. And so we want to get that off of there. It would affect a, a performance a lot more if we left it on. Gotcha. It make that rod tip heavy. All this product, the rods, the reels, the apparel, the hats, everything that's on the deck of this boat, you guys have a chance to win. All you need to do is go to the Tackle Warehouse Facebook page and click on the gear giveaway tab at the top of the page. Then go to the bottom of the page and submit a guess for the total retail value in dollars and cents of all the product here. The closest without going over wins everything.